video is going to be my first ever Jane Doe case and I've never done a Jane Doe case before but you all keep asking for one so here we are. If you don't know what a Jane Doe case is, it's basically where police find a body of a probably murdered victim and they cannot identify the body. So today we're going to be talking about a Jane Doe case of a woman nicknamed the Angel of the Meadow because Obviously we don't know her name, we don't know who she is, and that is all we can refer to her by. But quickly before we get into it, I just want to thank June's Journey for sponsoring this video. June's Journey is a hidden object murder mystery game where you play as June Parker trying to solve the murder of your own sister. The aesthetic of the game is super colourful, super detailed, and it's actually set in the 1920s, so all of the scenes are authentic to that. It's really gripping and interesting, but at the same time, it's really relaxing, so it's not like a scary, jumpy horror game. It's got all the intrigue of a murder mystery game, but without sending your heart rate through the roof. Which makes it a really good game to play at night, when you're in bed trying to wind down, or when you're relaxing, in the bath, whatever. I've been playing it to take like a couple minutes break from editing or researching, because it's a really easy game just to kind of pick up and resume from where you left off. Along with the storyline of solving the murder, you also get to decorate your own little estate. So there's a nice little like design aspect to the game as well. It's available for free on both iOS and Android devices and I will leave a link down in the description for you to go and download June's Journey. But without further ado, let's talk about the angel in the meadow. So I just want to give my usual disclaimer that I mean absolutely no disrespect to anyone that I talk about in this video. This video is for educational purposes and everything that I'm about to say is just information that I have found on the internet and I'm compiling into one video. So on January 25th, 2010 in Manchester in England, some workmen set out to this piece of land that they'd been given to prepare for buildings to be built over the top of it. At the time it was an out of use car park so it was just kind of spare land that had been there for a long time but even before that it was a notorious Victorian slum and this Victorian slum had been nicknamed hell on earth due to the awful conditions and deaths that would happen there. It's known ironically as Angel Meadow due to its placement by Angel Street in North East Manchester and Angel Meadow now is just this big kind of public park it's like seven acres large it's just got a load of grass area for you to go and do whatever you do at public parks. But on this day in 2010, when these workmen got to this area, one of them noticed a skull on the ground. So these workmen immediately called the police because this was very out of place and police came and cordoned the whole area off for searches. Police dug a little bit further and they found a mass of blue carpet. And when they pulled up that blue carpet, underneath they found the rest of a skeleton. So this skeleton was taken for post-mortem and identification, fearing that maybe it was a missing persons case that had been going on for so long and no one had known where this person was. So the skeleton was found to belong to a female between the ages of 18 and 35, which is a very big range. But what police weren't expecting to come from this post-mortem was that this was probably a murder victim. It seemed that the victim had a fractured neck, clavicle and jaw, suggesting a struggle and a probably very violent death. So obviously the body was very, very decomposed because it was a skeleton, all of the flesh and muscle had decomposed. And so pathologists estimated that this person had died between the 1970s and the 1980s. They estimated this woman to have been born in the early 1950s and said that she was probably around a size 12 in clothes, like what would be a size 12 now. This woman's height was anywhere between 5 foot 1 and 5 foot 7, which again is a very big range because they can't tell how much of the bones have worn away and whatever. And she was believed to have probably been European, although there was a possibility that she could have been Indian or Middle Eastern. This woman had several fillings in her teeth and one of her top right teeth was actually missing which pathologists believe was missing for a while this didn't happen during the struggle she had that while she was alive which meant that it would have probably been a very distinctive feature like something that you would recognize someone by you would notice when someone's talking or smiling that they don't have one of their teeth you know and this right here is what she is believed to have looked like the missing tooth is just a little bit further back in her mouth which is why you can't see it here with like how much her mouth is open and when she was found she was wearing a blue jumper, a blue bra, a green pinafore dress with really large buttons on it. It was a very distinct 1970s pattern, police say. And she was also wearing one black stiletto and the other one has never been found, which suggests that it either came off during the struggle 
or when her killer moved her body. There were also a few items found around her body, including a 1960s Guinness measuring chart, which I don't really know what that is, and I don't know what connection it could have to her body, I don't know why that would have been there, along with some orange carpeting and some blue carpeting, which I said obviously she was found underneath right at the beginning. And this carpeting is believed to have been from the interior of a Ford Cortina, because there was a hole where the gear stick would have been, and it seems to like match up perfectly with the interior of a Ford Cartina. So it seems that this obviously was a murder but it happened somewhere else and then maybe her body was put into a car, wrapped up in this carpet and her body was dumped here so the murder didn't actually happen in the park. Also alongside her body were some tights and a handbag, presumably hers, but this suggests that there was probably some sexual aspect to this crime because why else would she not be wearing her tights? It's believed that this was a sexually motivated murder. It's believed that she was raped or at least sexually assaulted. Police believe that she was also strangled for a period of time, but they don't know whether that was her actual cause of death or not. And they know for a fact that she was probably beaten due to all her different fractures in all her different bones. So police decided to look into three unsolved disappearances from the Manchester area, three women that had been missing for decades at this point. The first being Helen Sage, who was missing since 1997, Zoe Simpson, missing since 1996, and Helen McCourt, who was murdered in 1988. All of these women's dental records were tested against this woman, the Angel of the Meadow, although no matches were made, so she's not one of those three women. So police then decided to look into some known serial killers from the 70s, 80s and 90s that were active around the time of her murder. These being Peter Tobin, who I've actually done a full video on before, and Ronald Castry. Somehow there was a DNA analysis performed on her and no connections were made to either of the killers, yet I don't really understand how that went down. When she was found, she was just a skeleton, but obviously when she was killed, she had flesh and tissue all over her. So how would any DNA get onto her bones? And as well at this point when she was found and tested and everything, she'd been dead for around 30 to 40 years. So if there was any kind of DNA evidence on her bones somehow, surely it would have like disintegrated or washed away or... I don't know. I just don't really understand how they can rule that out completely by DNA analysis when she was just a skeleton, but I mean, police believed that it wasn't either of them, so... So following her discovery, the media nicknamed this woman the Angel of the Meadow, and her case was all over the news. It was on Crime Watch when that was a big thing. And with help from the public, police put together 22 possible identities that this woman could be. Police looked into leads from pretty much all over the world, from Ireland, Texas, the Netherlands, However, the most promising lead or the most promising identity was something completely off track from where police were even looking. Like I said before, police believed this woman to probably be European, possibly Middle Eastern. However, when contact was made with an East African family, police believed that to be the most promising lead. I don't know the specifics surrounding this particular lead. However, police somehow got in contact with a Tanzanian family and they believed that this woman was from Tanzania. I don't know if it was someone from their family that they believed it was, or if it was just, I genuinely don't know, but that is police's most promising lead right now. So in March of 2015, the Angel of the Meadow was buried in an unmarked grave in the Southern Cemetery in Manchester. Her burial was paid for by the state and her ceremony was attended by only two people, the two detectives that worked on her case. Police have saved DNA profiles from the Angel in the meadow so that if any other leads come up, any other potential identities come up, they can test her DNA against them. However, right now it's looking like this Jane Doe case has gone cold. Of course, if you do have any information regarding this case, don't hesitate to get in contact with the Manchester Police, be it by email or phone. I'll put a couple of numbers or emails in the description if you would like to get in contact with them, if you think you might know anything. But yeah, that completes this case. Let me know what you think of me possibly covering other Jane Doe cases or John Doe cases or just unidentified. 
people kisses again a big thank you to june's journey for sponsoring this video and yeah thank you so so much for watching if you enjoyed make sure you leave a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you want to see some more from me a huge thank you to all of my channel members all of their names are on screen right now if you want to become a channel member you can just click the link in the description or if you're on a desktop you can click the join button under the video if you become a channel member you'll get your name on this end card and you'll also have access to a members only community tab where i will ask for case suggestions do pull to see what cases come next and you can just have a lot more say in what you see on the channel but yeah thank you so so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye